All right, guys, thank you so much for joining. This is Prashant Kumar. Um, I am a multifamily syndicator, uh, you know, uh, and I will talk a little bit about myself and then I will introduce the guest, you know, my great friend, Eloy Ritana. But just a little bit about myself, you know, um, you know, nothing, I'm, I'm not gonna bore you guys. Probably you know a little bit about me anyway, uh, you know, strong technology background for last 25 years. You know, I, uh, I'm i a multifamily syndicator. Um, I just do this for fun, I, you know, to meet new people, networking. Uh, I'm involved in multifamily. My expertise are, I'm a numbers guy. Uh, I, I have, you know, about 1200 units in my, under my syndication. And I do explore, I mean, I've been doing assisted living for last one and a half years also. Um, and that's the reason I was in Phoenix a couple of weeks back to look at some of the assisted living facilities. Um, but I'm always there to mentor and willing to share the knowledge uh, that I have gained over years. And I continue to want to invest in multifamily and assisted living. That's all I want to talk about myself. Um, and uh, basically, one, you know, I'm, with that, I'm going to introduce my friend Eloy. He is in mobile home parks. He's from Apex. What's the full name? Apex. Apex uh, communities. Apex communities. Yes. So I know Eloy from one of my mastermind groups, and you know, we connected very well. And he said, "Let me let me." interview you on my webinar and kind of let you share, let him share the knowledge that he has gained in multifamily, uh, not mobile home park space. He's a passionate real estate investor and he, he's, a, he's an author of a book, The Top Three Reasons to Invest in Mobile Home Parks. He has been in IT industry like me uh, for 25 years. And I just figured out that he also graduated almost in the same year when I was I graduated, um, you know, he hosts the Savvy, uh, you know, Mobile Home Park Investor Podcast. He's currently invested in 113 apartments, units, and you know, and mobile home park units. You know, while investing, he invests. I mean, the good thing about Eli is he continues to invest into his education through no, top-notch courses and through personal mentorship with. Uh, you know, industry leader experts, you know, like Brian Ellis and Adam Adams. Eloy educates people. Why currently doing this? I mean, during this pandemic, you know, uh, why mo mo mobile home parks are the best investments on the earth? That's what he thinks. And we are, we are going to listen, hear all from him about mobile home parks. Um, you know, and, and the mobile home, according to him, mobile home parks are, are safer you know, lower ten turnovers and they offer higher returns uh, and have, you know, lower taxes than stock. So having said that, I'm not gonna steal the thunder anymore. I'm gonna let uh, Eloy uh, talk about himself. Um, you know, Eloy, welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, appreciate you taking time. Uh, and we are, I hope, you know, this would be useful for our listeners today. Thank you, uh, thank you, Prashant. It's uh, um, I'm, not, I'm honored to be here. Um, it's funny that you mentioned because we started talking about uh, how we're both we've both been in IT for 25 years, and I've I've told this story multiple times of of my career in IT, and it, it's amazing how 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 it resonates with a whole lot of people. Because I mean, I, I for a lot of us, or a lot of us uh, are either programmers or in IT security, like like myself. I started out in '95. I started working, and I. Like I told you, I, I thought we were going to, I thought I was going to do IT security for 40 years, right? Until I die. And then 20 years into it and, you know, now 25 years, I'm like, I don't think I want to do this anymore. Right. I'm, I'm burned out. I'm tired. I need to figure out something different, you know, to, to, uh, to fund my retirement. So that's, you know, back in 99, I took some courses from a guy named uh, Claude Diamond up here in Denver. I'm, anyways, I'm from Denver, Colorado. Uh, for if, if anybody is uh, from Denver, I'd, I'd be happy to meet with you. But uh, I took some lease option courses back then, and I did do a couple of deals with single family homes. 
And right around that time, I'm talking about 2000, 2001, if you guys remember, I mean, IT was just blowing up. It was crazy. And I made the decision back then that I was going to concentrate on my IT career and my my real estate venture, we're going to take a back seat, right? And it's one of those things that I look back now, I'm like, oh, I should have, I should have not done that, right? I should, I should have gone, I should have jumped in both feet uh, into my real estate. So that's kind of how it went until like about 2008, right? I had most of my money invested in 401k. And as it turns out, as, as many of you might have uh, gone through the same thing, I, I lost everything, you know, uh, basically from one, from one day to the next, it, it was, it seemed like it was all gone, right? Uh, and it was because my, my my 401k was mostly invested in in these uh, uh, mortgage backed securities, right? And that's what took down the, the economy back in 2008. So basically I lost everything. Fortunately, I was still young enough where I felt that I can I could rebuild, right? I just kept, felt kind of sorry for, if you were in your 60s on the verge of retirement and you lose everything, I mean, <laughs> That would stink, right? So I, I promised myself that I was going to rebuild, and it wasn't going to be around the stock market. I figured, well, why don't I why don't I take a step back and and do some of the things I know have worked for me in the past, right? Why don't I take a, a second look at, at doing more of the lease options and learn some of the other techniques, uh, owner finance, subject to things of that nature. I tried flipping, I tried wholesaling. I didn't like any of it because it was. It was another job, right? Anybody who's done, anybody who's flipped a home and done any sort of wholesaling would tell you it's not really investing. All you're doing is, is taking on another job. Well, I already have a job. I didn't need a second job. So for me, it was all right. How do I, how do I develop cash flow, right? And at that time, it was uh, I was going to build out my portfolio of single-family homes, and I thought, well, if I'm going to make, you know, two hundred dollars per door, three hundred dollars per door, well. If, if I want to replace my, if I want to replace my income, how many houses am I going to have to acquire to make say fifteen thousand dollars per month in income? That's good. that's a lot of houses. I'm not, I don't know if I can, I, I don't know if I can pick up a hundred houses. I mean, maybe I could. So I, I I started down that road, and then around that time, this is a funny story. My I met my my now part my, my Steve Anderson, who's my partner now. I met him through salsa dancing of all things. Uh, him and I have become friends. And in, and in one conversation, I said, Hey, Steve, what do you do for a living? He says, Oh, I, I flip homes and I, and I do new developments. I'm like, Oh, you're in real estate. He goes, yeah, he goes. And, and so I started picking his brain and telling him what I do. And then we became pretty good friends. And then as time went on, he said, Hey, I'm, I'm taking these uh, multifamily courses and uh, I'm learning to underwrite and I'm going to take on, I'm just going to, I'm done with the I'm done with the flipping. I'm done with the new builds. I just wanna I wanna go bigger. And I'm like, okay. And he said, Do you want to be my partner? And I'm like, when he first brought it up to me, I was like, uh sure, I don't have hundreds and millions of dollars to go buy apartments, but okay. <laughs> so my the first time it was brought up, I had no idea that investing in apartments was a thing, right? It, it, it just seemed it just seemed like pine in the sky type stuff. Um, around that time, I started attending Adam Adams events out here in Denver. And Adam was a, he's a syndicator, uh, an apartment yeah. syndicator. Yep, yep. And he was saying the same things. It's like, if you, if you partner up with people that have the same goals as you do, right? And then you guys, concent and each person concentrates on, he would, he would describe it as wearing a hat. One person wears the acquisition hat. One person does the uh, the investor relations hat, another person does the asset management hat, everybody wears a hat, but we're all, the whole group is working together toward one end. Then you, what happens is that you can get, you can scale, you can go big and you can get to your goals a lot quicker, right? How, how long is it going to take you to acquire a hundred unit apartment complex? Well, if you work your butt off, there's no reason that you can't start uh, making offers right away, right? And then you work together to, to raise the money for these deals and, and try to acquire a, 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 an apartment complex. And I, the more I thought about that, I was like, okay, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. I, why didn't I think about this before? I mean, how come nobody, how come our schools never teach us about these, this sort of stuff? And, and it's, it's sad to, to really 
when you start thinking about it, it's like our school, our school system doesn't teach us about taxes. It doesn't teach us about investments. You kind of kind of have to figure it out on your own, right? And, and, and kind of trip and fall on your own. And hopefully along the way, you meet the right people, people that you can partner with and then just go bigger. So that's kind of how I stepped into it. So Steve and I began, we started going down that road of looking for uh, multifamily apartments. And we quickly found out that in Denver, at least, everything was so overpriced. When I mean, we were talking, this is 2015, 2016. And wow. things were all, yeah, things were like, oh my God, none of these, these numbers just don't make sense. Everything's just so overpriced, right? Even and, at that time. Yeah, and even at that time, this, I mean, this is only a couple of years back. And then, so we, we kind of gave up on, on Denver. So we started looking in, uh, Phoenix, Tucson, and we we bumped into a couple of deals there, and then we would get out bid. We we figured from the time we started looking to the time we actually would find something, uh, it would it was going to take us about a year. We we just we just we just c c uh, concluded that it was going to take us about a year, and it took us exactly thirteen months before wow. we found our first deal. But what happened is my uh, my partner Steve he came back to me one day and he said, "Hey, I got something." I think I got something. And I said, okay, what do you got? He's like, I, I, I got this trailer park. And my first, oh, rea okay. my, first rea my first reaction was like, uh, no, not okay. a trailer park. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. How do we go? How did we go from looking for an apartment complex to finding a trailer park? And, and no, I thought that's, that's no, that's ridiculous. And he's like, no, look at these numbers. This, this is a really good deal. And we're never going to find an apartment complex with these, these kind of returns. And I looked at it and I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's actually, that's actually really good. So I said, I said, give me, give me a week. Let me bury myself in, 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 uh, audio books and podcasts. And let me just learn as, as much as I can in, in a week. And, 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 I'll, and, I'll, and then we'll, we'll see what happens. And after a week of doing that, of listening to podcasts and, and, and reading every book that I can get my hands on. Not only did I, not only did I come to the conclusion that mobile home parks were the right thing for us as a team, they, the timing was right because, uh, you know, everybody keeps talking about, you know, an economic downturn and recession and who knows what's going to, who knows what the next five years is going to look like, but mobile home parks as it, as it's turning out is, perfectly positioned to weather uh, any time of, of economic uh, um, downturn. And COVID has, the, this last year, as we've gone through this pandemic has kind of proven to us that, yeah, that's, there's, there's people who own apartment complexes who are having trouble with, boy, you know, rental boycotts and people not paying rent. Uh, not only are we not seeing that in mobile home parks, a lot of our friends and, and some of the people that we know, know who also own mobile home parks, they're not seeing that sort of thing. And I think the part of the reason why that is, it, it's quite simple. If you, if you can't, if you can't afford $500, $600, $600 lot rent, you can't afford to live anywhere. I mean, where, where are you going to go? Right. If you, if you live in a 1700, you know, $1,900 uh, luxury apartment, you know, those are going to be the first to go probably. Right. And when you lose your job, you're starting to, you're going to stop paying your rent, but if you can't afford five hundred dollars, you you can't afford to live anywhere. Yeah. And also, the 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 reason that we love mobile home parks, uh, the other big reason is that oftentimes, more often than not, I should say, we aim to own the land, not the mobile homes themselves, right? So, if we buy a park with park-owned homes, one of the things that we aim to do. And, and, and again, this is deal by deal. This isn't the case in every case, but uh, by the, for the most part, uh, we aim to sell those homes back to the tenants. We either fix them up, we replace them with new ones and then sell them either owner finance or for cash, right? Uh, and, it, and it depends on, on how, you know, how much work needs to be done. But at the end of the day, in most parks, we just want to own the land and collect the lot rent. So we will fix the place up um, we'll pave the roads, um, you know, we'll, we'll put up new signs. And then once we take over a park, we, we establish new rules, right? Like you have to keep your place clean. Um, we want everybody to, to paint the exterior of their homes, right? Just doing basic things like that. That's going to give the park, uh, it's going to spruce the place up. It's going to, it's going to give the park a nice clean look, but in the long term, we're hoping to drive 
the price of the of the rents up, right? And 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 by doing that, you drive the value of the park up, right? And then and then whatever your exit strategy is, and whether you're going to refi or sell later. We right now, I I love the model, and I'm I'm a buy and hold guy, right? I want to keep these things for as long as we can and and collect cash flow, because you know, like I said, I'm in IT, and I don't want to do IT till I'm 65. I'm I'm ready to quit now. <laughs> yeah. No. So um, I'll take a step, uh, you know, just jump in a lot for a minute. Guys, you have heard the story from Eloy, right? I mean, he has 25 years of experience in IT and he has worked his corporate jobs and stuff like that. And, and, and same is the case with me, you know, those who know me a little bit more. Uh, but I mean, I interview a lot of people here in, in my podcast, uh, in this webinar, and I hear the same consistent story. You know, people want to, the beginning of the career, people think that, you know, buying a couple of single family homes is the way to go and and slow, and they want to enjoy the cash flow of those single family homes. But over a period of time, people start realizing that it's not worth the time that you are spending on those single family homes. You probably need like a thousand single family homes to be able to quit your job. You know, if not thousand, at least a couple of hundred and to build a portfolio of a couple of hundred single family homes one at a time is going to take at least five to 10 years. And, and, and so basically the way to go further and fastest and further is to scale yourself, scale yourself. And that's what, uh, you know, Eli did. And that's what we are also trying to do. I mean, uh, is basically going to an asset class where you can acquire in one transaction, you can acquire hundreds of the units, yeah. you know, like 500 units. Wouldn't it be great that you just acquire one whole home pass which has 500 units at once and you suddenly are, you know, like into 500 units? And, you know, like in multifamily, you know, we acquire, we do that. I mean, and we do that all the time. Um, so if you want to scale your business, you have to find an asset class. And today we are talking about mobile home parks. You, and, and those who don't know more about mobile home parks, I would like, I would ask a question to Eloy. What, I mean, just at a basic level, you know, a lot of people don't know what mobile home parks are. I mean, when you say trailer park and your reaction, hmm, I don't want it, right? I don't know what it is, you know? So, yeah, there's a, there's, a stigma. there's a stigma with mobile home parks um, because people think uh, they think they're, they're crummy communities. There's drug dealers. There's n no good things going on, and that's that that's not true. I mean, that's not been our experience. You know, and like in every like in every uh, case, there's always a, a bad apple or two bad apples in the community. But you can say that about apartments too, right? There's one. Yeah. There's a troublemaker. There's people not paying their rent. That sort of thing. I yeah. suppose that there's always going to be that. The, those sort of people that you're going to have to clean out. Uh, our goals to not only, I mean, along with driving up the, the value of the parks over, over a course of several years, we want to make it a safe place to live, right? So we want to find out who those troublemakers are and make sure that they, they you know, that they leave the park. So that's part of of, our, of us adding value to to the community, right? Uh, yeah. So and I so let me back up here because the a trailer. So most people still call it a trailer park, but actually the 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 proper um, the proper phrase is actually a man manufactured home community, right? Yeah. They were they were trailer parks for a long time, then they were mobile home parks, but it's actually a manufactured community. That's 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 what they're called now. <laughs> yeah, MHCs, MHCs. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. No, but I, I, mean, but I, I wanted to, I wanted to point out something that you mentioned earlier is that you know when you when most people understand that that you build um, you build uh, you you build personal net worth by acquiring real estate, right? And most people who, who don't know uh, about real estate, they generally consider two types of real estate investment. They, they know about flipping homes because they watch those TV shows of where they're flipping a home. And most people will think of rentals, right? I'll, I'll, I'll pick up a rental and, you know, they'll pick up two houses, three houses. Uh, but the initial intention would be to, you know, have the tenants pay off the mortgage, and then 25, 30 years, you'll have two or three homes, maybe more, that you own free and clear. And that and that'll be part of your retirement plan, right? And then as you start to get what what happens is at some point is you realize that if you do more of these types of single family homes, you you might actually, if you build enough of them, you might actually be able to replace your income, 
right? So the question becomes, how do I, how do I build out a portfolio of 20, 30 homes, right? And there's all sorts of strategies. Like I was telling you, there's, there's leaps options and there's sub twos and all uh, things of that nature. For me, when I started going down that road, it's like, well, it's going to take a hundred of these, right? Yeah. How, and how much time is it going to take to get a hundred of these? So by going larger, I can get, you can get to your goals a lot quicker. So not, it's not only a, um, a retirement plan now, it's, it, you, it's a, there's a real possibility that you can replace your income and you can do this full time, right? It's not something that happens tomorrow, but if you plan it correctly, there's no reason. I know people who've, who started doing this and within two years, they own 300 units and they're not, they, they quit their jobs, which is, yeah. that's amazing. That's yeah. awesome that you can do that, right? Yeah, so the important thing is from this conversation is to get the message, you know. I mean, yes, we have a story, but to get you guys, I mean, our purpose is for you to get the message. The message is, you know, you don't have to wait 25 years to start this, right? I mean, you don't have to wait 20 years. I mean, I heard a couple of people, you know, who want to retire early. It's better we, we focus on these strategies earlier in our career and, and then start pursuing those strategies you know just not give up and and move on to start doing different things have something consistent in your career so that you enjoy the benefit at a later time you yeah. know i mean that, that, that's the real message i think uh, you know I, I mean at least i'm getting out of this you know yeah i i, I would say that uh, another thing too is that um i get a lot of people who, who i talk to and they say hey how can i how can I partner with you, right? What, what, can, what, what can we do to partner? And we say, well, find me a deal, right? Find me a deal, help me find another, and then we can partner together to, and then we'll raise some money to, to knock down the deal. We, yeah. we, we decided to concentrate our efforts in, in the, in the uh, Orlando area in, in central Florida. Yeah. That's where we are currently finding our, our deals. Um, they're, they're on the smaller side because, you know, yeah, we can pursue the 100 and 200 units uh, mobile home parks, but we're also competing with the hedge funds, right? We're competing yeah. with the big money and they got cash. They go and pay cash. So it's impossible to compete. So the question for us is, okay, what in what area can we compete, right? And still be able to roll up uh, a, a few parks. Well, and if we do, if we pick up a couple of the smaller parks, you know, the 20s and 30s and the 40 units, okay, the, there's less competition with those and we'll just have to do more of them, right? So if we can roll up and start building our, uh, start building a, a base, uh, a track record, right? And start showing our, our, our investors that we can make, make them money. Well, let's start with that, right? So that's, that's kind of uh, the road that we went down. Um, we love Florida. Florida is, at least last year, this, it moved up to number three this year, but last year it was the number one migrated to state. Wow. Um, I mean, it's, it's growing. The population south, south, you know, south Florida, central Florida, the real estate prices have gone through the roof. So we, we came in and bought a couple of parks at a really good price. And now they're worth a lot more, right? After we yeah. fixed them up and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've got, a, we've, got a, we've got an in there with a couple of brokers and that's how we're landing our deals. So we're just gonna, we're gonna continue growing our portfolio in central Florida. Daytona, basically it's the, the area around the space coast, right? Cape Canaveral up and through Orlando and up uh, into the Daytona beach, that area. But eventually I love Huntsville, Alabama, Huntsville, Alabama, right? Georgia, yeah. pretty yeah. much. Um, those are great. Those are great uh, states with a lot of growth. Um, they have their, the uh, state governments are, 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 they lean toward the, ten no, not the tenants, the, the landlords are landlord friendly. And those are things that we look at, right? Um, yeah. Growing population, growing job markets, um, that sort of thing, right? And, and obviously, uh, given that the other cool thing about mobile home parks is that uh, many of them were built 30, 40 years ago, right? And yeah. there's still a lot of opportunity where you can talk directly with the sellers, right? And the sellers are most, most of the time they're, they're in their 70s, they're in their 80s, they've owned the parks for 20, 30 years. And like in our case, when we bought our first park in Cape Canaveral, the lady had not raised the rent since 1985. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So there there were there was people, there were people in the in the in the park who were paying 250 bucks lot rent. Wow. 
right? Um, so it was like, okay, these a huge. So basic basic thing is to you still have an opportunity in the mobile home park space where you can find mom and pop owners who have been owning these places. Uh, you have tremendous potential for tremendous upside. Yes. Uh, through that you know once you acquire an older park, you get in, you fix it up, and and then you probably sell the units back to the tenants you know yeah. your goal your goal is the strategy is your goal is to own the land and keep the land clean and and sell yeah. the units back to the uh, back to the owners or back to the yeah if if ideally we'll sell it back to the person who lived there before right once yeah. we fix it up but if they don't want it then we'll just sell it on the open market um no yeah right uh, that's not always is the case we're working on a park now where we're going we've decided to keep we've decided to keep um, keep the the units as rentals because we're just we'll just collect more rent that way mm -hmm. so it's on a case by case basis but for the most part if, if you've got 50 if you got a 50 unit park and you and most of those units need work yeah. well you don't want to do all that work right yeah. you rather just sell them as is sell them to somebody who pay you 10 grand 15 grand let them fix them up let you they can go and spend another ten thousand. Or it might make sense to grab two or three of them ourselves, yeah. fix them up, you know, they're um, put, you know, $10,000, $15,000 into them, turn, turn around and sell them owner finance for 20, you know, yeah. and now, now we have a second stream, stream of income right there. Right. So it's, it's, a, it's about being creative. You got to be creative. Yeah. Yeah. And um, because a lot of these mom and pop owners are, are elderly, yeah. likely they, they own the parks free and clear. Yeah. Right. Which also yep. presents an opportunity for uh, owner finance. Owner right? finance. Yep. So one of the things that that we do is when we talk to owners, like, well, you you can move yourself from the position of owner to the position of bank. Yeah. Right. Now we're, we're if you take over if you carry us on this loan, you you're the bank, but we're the one taking care of the toilets and and the and the tenants, and you're yep. just collecting a check every month from us. Yep. Right? yep. And sometimes. You have to educate the owners on that because they don't even know they don't even know that that's an option. Uh, yeah, they don't they don't know they don't know the they don't know the fundamental economics that by doing that they would in the long run would be saving taxes. Yes. They, uh, yeah. They so that's the fundamental knowledge that you guys do to those owners so that they know okay they still have the cash flow and they don't have to pay that much taxes. You know they have owned it for thirty years. And the park value yeah. has tripled, and you know exactly. otherwise they would have a big capital gain uh, bill coming to them. You know, taxes. And that's what they do. That's what they do know, right? And what, what one 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 of the reasons they don't sell is one, they need it to live off of, right? They need the cash yeah. flow to survive. Yeah. But two, if they if they outright sell, they're going to have to pay that capital gains, so they yeah. don't sell. They don't but sell. They don't have them, but they don't have the money to fix the place up either. Yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, or they just don't want to fix the place up. So if you, if through the process of, of keep calling them and keep talking to them, you, you slowly educate them and say, well, you know, we, we can take over the park and we'll take care of all the maintenance and you're just the, the bank. Right. Yeah. And, and it's sometimes, sometimes it, it takes a while. Sometimes they don't want to listen and you know how it is with. Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, no, very, no. It's basically, it's basically building relationships with those yes. owners. 100%. Yes, it. You, you trust me. You know, I bought one single-family apartment complex, seventy-two units. After talking to the seller for a year, you know, I, he became my friend. You know, I kept yeah. on talking to him for a year. I mean, he 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 lives in Chicago. I, the property is in Indianapolis. I live in New York. I talked to him. I said, "Listen, I'm going to come come and meet you in person." I was so excited. So I flew to Chicago just to meet him not even looking at the property. Yeah. He said, why are you coming? I said, I just want to meet you. You know, you, you seem like a nice guy. Uh, I, I mean, I didn't go to meet him, but I mean, my sister lives there. So I was going to meet my sister. Yeah. So yeah. long story short, he became a friend. He said, Kumar, if I'm going to sell it, I'm going to sell it to you. Yeah. And, 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 you know, after a year, he called me and he said, I'm ready to sell. Do you want to buy? I said, send me the contract. I didn't even ask the price, send me the contract. So that building relationship in this business is, is the key. I mean, yes. you build relationship with these elder, you know, elderly people. And, and guys, one thing I'm still trying to communicate once again here is do not look at 
fifteen thousand dollar unit, you know, owner finance twenty thousand dollar unit. Look at the scale. If you have fifty units of, you know, twenty thousand dollar each, it's a million dollar park, yeah. right? And and you the amount of cash flow that you would do get in that million dollar park, you probably cannot get that kind of cash flow uh, in in five, ten single family homes. You know, which will probably be more than million dollar. No. I'll, say that, I'll say this that a lot of people don't think about and it's one of the things that that scared me when I first when I first talked to Steve my partner about trip about mobile home parks is that there's a lot of mobile home parks that have like septic systems lagoons um, pr private uh, private utilities right um, water wells and I was like man I don't I don't you're the you're the water company you're the sewer company you're your own sewer company i mean who wants to do that right and uh since he had since he felt a lot more comfortable with that because he had done new builds he would build you know he would buy these plots of lands out in out in uh pikes peak which is like a national uh a forest area so he mm -hmm. had no plan he had no problem putting in a, a septic system in in water well so he was very comfortable with it but at the at the beginning i was like no nah, i don't Septic systems? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so that takes that takes a little getting used to. But after a while, you 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 come to the realization that you just have to understand those systems, right? You have to know what, yeah. when you buy in a park. Yes, ideally you want city water, city sewage, city yeah. everything, right? That's that would be ideal. But in most parks, that's that's not you know you'll have you might have city water and city power, but you have you know a septic system. So okay, right. so as long as you understand how those work and you're maintaining them. You, you bring in maintenance when it once a year or you know what what have you for for that for that park mm -hmm. it's it's not it's not that big of a deal but it's one of the things you definitely have to kind of get used to if you're not if you've never been used to doing that yourself got it got it right we, we were we are talking for about 30 minutes now i'm going to take a short break here that was fast but yeah yeah i know that was fast. It, it was very mesmerizing for me to listen uh, i hope it was educational for our listeners also I will take just five minutes to talk about one thing which I'm working on right now, and then we'll come back to this, take okay. some questions, and then we will jump into the networking round where you know we'll we'll get into smaller groups and let everybody talk, interact with with everybody. Uh, you know, so just you know, I know you kind of talked about Huntsville, and I'm gonna share my screen here. Uh, something I'm working on in Huntsville. Um, right now uh, as i said you know i'm a multifamily investor uh, uh syndicator i mean we have a couple of deals in huntsville going on right now huntsville alabama uh, you know i'm not gonna bore you guys too much about and I, i'll i'll share all this information those who are interested in and this is the close group and uh, so we i'm working on a deal in huntsville right now uh, you know it's a high-tech economic growth population you know, I'm just skipping it very fast, you know, huge employment trends in Huntsville, you know, uh, you know, overall job growth now is going up and up in Huntsville. So many jobs announcements, you know, Boeing, Facebook, NASA, Google. I mean, this is one of the fastest country in the country. I, I mean, fastest growing city in the, in the, in the country right now. Again, I'm not boring you guys on anything. Uh, but one thing I want to bring to uh, attention is we we are in Huntsville for last four or five years, and we have four projects going on in Huntsville. Uh, you know, and one one property that we bought in Huntsville in July of eighteen, July of nineteen actually. Uh, it's about five hundred uh, four hundred fifty eight unit apartment complex. Uh, is called Madison Madison. Uh, grow and the F, very affluent market. You know, lot of lot of uh, you know positive positivity around that area. And within one and a half years, we have reached to our projections, which we had done for about four years. Our rent growth uh, in one and a half years, we have done a lot of uh, renovation work on those. Uh, and these are older pictures, by the way. And I didn't have anything, uh, you know, uh, ready for today's conversation. But we have done a lot of re uh, rehab on these units, and we are getting the rents which we had projected for four years from now. 
in about one year, one and a half years, we are already getting those rents. So our numbers are looking pretty good. Um, this was uh, this was a 23, 24 million dollar acquisition that we had done. Uh, and and I mean, you look at these post rents, we are already getting them. I mean, the, these are not something for future. So long story short, uh, and that's not the purpose of this webinar. Long story short, we have a little bit of a leeway before we exit. I mean, we plan to exit this year sometime in 2021, by end of 2021, and we are refinancing the property. So during the refinance, there is some spot open and which we had not filled when we had bought this asset. So we, we already had those spots as per the PPM and we have those spots available. Uh, those who are interested uh, in knowing about this property, please contact me. Uh, just at a very high level, and I and that's, I mean, I'm not trying to lure you guys. When we started this, our projections were about 2.5x in four years. That's how we had started. 2.5x for our limited partners in about four to five years. But now we we know that we are going to exit in 2021 um, uh, by end of 2021. And all we need, just a little bit of space left uh, for refinancing purposes. Um, we are do, we did our, our underwriting. Uh, and again, I will share all the information, those who are interested in, in this. If we have to exit uh, in about nine to 10 months, if somebody invests about 100,000, it's, it's gonna be at least this much. I mean, at least 60% return. I mean, to be conservative, if it is more than twenty five percent, that that's like a jackpot, you know. Uh, I, I don't, I didn't want to say sixty percent, but you know, my partner said no, say it, say it. That's why I'm saying it. Lowest end, whatever you, you can strip yourself, <laughs> at least twenty five percent within one year. That's almost guaranteed. Of course, there's no guarantee here. And again, the purpose of this webinar is just the educational purposes. Um, you know, it's not. Uh, um, you know, we are not trying to raise money, but I'm just sharing this information. Those who are interested, uh, please contact uh, me and I'm going to share uh, my contact information. Um, and yeah, that's all. I just wanted to kind of bring it up. We are in Huntsville. We actually closed another deal in Huntsville um, two weeks ago, uh, Grand Reserve. Uh, that's a $40 million acquisition that is closed. But this one is the refinance, which was sitting in the back bench because of the earlier acquisition. And now we have to close it within the next two, three weeks. The only thing is the 506C, it's accredited investors only. So if you are accredited investors, if you're, and if you just want to talk to me, feel, feel free, you know, contact me, you know, um, you know, do some soft reserve. You don't have to invest. I'm not, it's not a hard sell, just sharing this information. That's all. I don't want to take <laughs> too much time on this, but in the chat window, I'm gonna leave few um, links, you know, number one, to have a schedule a call with me. Number two, um, uh, uh, number two, you know, I have a educational um, website, myrealtygains.com, in which I educate, we educate, you know, passive, you know, kind of bring everybody up to the speed of fundamentals of passive investing. So feel free to subscribe to that seven day newsletter. And there's a link for the soft reserve also. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in the chat window in, in, in a minute, but I'm gonna uh, start talking to my friend Eloy now once again. Well, that's all, I, that's the only time I wanted in this, uh, <laughs> in this presentation. Um, so yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say Huntsville, Alabama, like I was telling you before, I've heard, I've heard nothing but amazing things. It's, it seems to be like this hidden gem, right? Uh, very few people know about the the, the growth of, of Huntsville, right? There's just so much tech. The FBI is moving in. Uh, NASA. Yeah, FBI, NASA, you know, you, you I mean, I should, I skipped the whole presentation, you know, I could talk, I could talk for <laughs> days, you know. No, going off here. like I was telling you, this is like the third year. You're like the third person in the last five or six weeks that that has brought up Huntsville, Alabama. Like, wow, what's what's going on out there? It's like nobody seems to know about this little 
and it's not so little, right? It's a, it's a, it's a big enough town. It's just no, I, who would who would have thought, right? Because everybody, at least everybody in the multi-family space, all they talk about is Dallas. Yeah, Dallas, I, I, Dallas and Austin, uh, Dallas and Austin, Texas. That seems to be where everybody wants to be. Right. Everybody, everybody wants to talk about Dallas and Austin, and and probably you know Denver actually uh, is already hyped up, and Phoenix yeah. is all, already hyped up. Yeah. Uh, you know. But it looks like you, it looks like there's some golden opportunity right there in, in Huntsville. That's that's great. Yeah. So I I'm, I'm getting some questions here in the chat window. Let me start with them. Um, you know, somebody is saying that. Uh, uh, you know, how are you man managing these parts? You know, uh, are you internalizing management, uh, outsourcing? How are you, you know, are you outsourcing your management or what's what's the method of your, uh, you know, management? You yeah, know? so so you, you know this, you know this to be true, Prashant, uh, have finding the right uh, property manager will will make or break your deal, right? If you If right. you have the wrong person in there, they can make your life miserable. We we managed to get a guy that we I mean we love the guy. He he's he came along with our our he he used to manage the part of the very first part that we that we purchased. The, he used to manage the part that right next to us, right? So if, if his part looked beautiful and our the part that we bought looked old and and run down, and so we went to talk to him and we said, hey, uh, he goes we're we're the new owners of that park over there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, would you be interested in managing that park for us? And he said, he goes, what do you want to do? What do you want to do with your park? I said, we want, we want our park to look like your park. That's the goal. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, and, uh, it, it was that simple, right? So we got lucky with him. Uh, he's done a, not an amazing job. He does a lot. He knows how to do a lot of the, uh, construction type work himself. So a lot of times he'll, he'll just handle the, a lot of the the, uh, 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 the rehabs himself, right? And we'll pay him extra. Um, but so when we started acquiring parks on the north end, like an hour away, um, we would send them. We would send him to scout for us, right? So because he had he had so much experience as a property manager and so much experience with um, with mobile home parks that we said if we if somebody sent us a deal and it looked the numbers looked good, the underwriting looked good. Well, we weren't there, right? We're in Denver. Right, we're not going to fly out there just to go walk a park. Well, why don't we send why don't we send Bill, our property manager, out there, and he can tell us what he thinks. And he would come back and would say, "Yeah, you don't want this park it, it, because of this or that or whatever reason, right?" So, yeah. but if he if he if he came back and said, "Yeah, I think this is a good park. There's there's potential here. I think you can do something." That alone meant meant a lot for us, right? That means a lot. So as so when we would acquire a park, we said, would you be interested in managing this park for us? Right. So yeah, we 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 lucked out with the property manager. Yeah, but yeah, we, find, yeah, finding the real, yes, you are right. I mean, Eloy, uh, the finding the real property management form is the key for success. Yeah. yeah and so. and the most important thing in this business is don't think that you are paying the property manager, you know. You are partnering with property manager right. in a way, right? I mean, you have to consider them as your partners because they work for your property, even though they get paid on a negotiated price. That if you do too much of nickel and dime on on their fees, yeah, you wouldn't know what it means. You know what can happen because they are they are on your property. They can do whatever they want. You know, that's right, it, right? So, so I mean, I have learned it not hard way, but you know, I started with that approach. I said, listen, even if I have to pay a little bit more. For my property management, I'm going to make sure that I have the right property manager uh, for my for my property. One hundred percent. And 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 those property managers actually are opening up the offices just for us. You know, we nice. started in Houston, then we went to Huntsville. They said, "Oh, we'll come to Huntsville with you." So you kind of build the relationship. They get paid what everybody else would get paid, but you know they they are there with you for the long haul. That's right. Right. So no, very good. So, so some, somebody is asking, you know, Seth is asking, he says, how about the financing? I mean, how do, how do bank finance these? I mean, financing, refinancing, what are the limitations in mobile home parks? Yeah, so that, that could be a challenge because um, when you acquire a park, uh, you know, oftentimes they don't want to touch the mobile homes themselves, right? So they'll, they'll say something like, yeah, we'll, we'll let you borrow money for the land. 
but you got a hundred thousand dollars worth of, of mobile homes or two hundred thousand dollars mobile of mobile homes that they don't want to touch, right? So oftentimes what we'll do is we'll use uh, we'll use um, bridge lending to acquire the park, right? We'll turn the park around, and then uh, in the future, in two or three years down the road, there's we use local banks, right? The local banks know the areas. They oftentimes they know a lot about mobile home parks, and they're, they're the ones that are willing to give us a long term loan. But all that takes a backseat. Because ultimately, if we can if we can do owner finance, that's mm-hmm. the way to go, right? Uh, at least for the first few years, if yeah. they're willing to carry you for say five years, then you do all the renovations that you need to do, and then you put some long term some long term debt later, right? When the park is all fixed up, and now the banks that then they'll give you money. But yeah, some banks don't want to touch mobile home because they don't mobile home parks because they don't understand them. But if you look around, there's plenty there's plenty that understand the value. Yeah. of mobile home parks and they're willing to lend you on, on they're willing to lend, sorry they're willing to lend on those so so guys in the chat window i have put in a couple of links uh one is to schedule an appointment a second is my seven day email course it's all free and i have a passionate passive investors club even that is free everything is free here we are not selling anything and there is a soft reserve link also if you are interested in knowing more about the projects that we are doing in Huntsville. And this particular project, you know, the Medicine Grow and the AV, we are going to close in next, you know, 10 to 12 months. And that would, would mean a substantial return for those who, who join the project now because we are already done like 75% of it. Uh, you know, it's just refinancing needs a little bit of equity and that's how we have brought in. Uh, I think uh, first, Perry is raising a hand. Perry, do you have a question for Eloy? Unmute yourself if you want to. Otherwise, we will jump into the next section of this presentation today, uh, in which we are going to divide ourselves into smaller groups, like group of four or five people each. And, uh, you know, talk for about 10, 15 minutes. I mean, we will be done hopefully by right now it is, uh, 50 after the hour, so we'll, we'll be probably done by five after after the next hour, depending upon where you are. Right now it is 8.50 here in New York. Uh, maybe we'll be done in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so we respect your time. Uh, I'm going to, unless anybody has any specific question, I'm going to go into the smaller groups. How's that? Uh, I'm going to take that as a yes, and I'm going to break into smaller groups, guys, okay? I'm gonna create four groups out of 18 people. Feel free to talk and connect, share your knowledge or uh, you know contact information. Uh, three groups, I think, maybe four. Three, four groups, okay. All right. Open all rooms. So before before I before I do that, Eli, just in case if I lose you <laughs> by the end. I would say thank you so much for coming. I mean, that that's a great, you know, it's, it's a cozy conversation. I, do, I hate to break it, but I, I want to respect everybody's time. Thank you for having uh, me, Prashant. That was, that was, I had a great time. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. And, and feel free to connect with, with everybody, you know.